Hi guys, welcome back to Metabox Tutorials. Today, we are going to create a detailed page for products and their variations. As you can see here, each of the variations is a color of the product. When you choose a color, it will get the corresponding image gallery. When you choose another one, it will get a different gallery. At the same time, other information of that variation will automatically come up. In this tutorial, we will do it with Metabox and Gutenberg. For page builders, we will have other tutorials later. So, keep track of our channel. We'll need Metabox and some of its extensions for this practice. I already installed Metabox Core plugin to have a framework to create custom fields. It's free on WordPress.org, so you can download it directly. With extensions of Metabox, you can install them individually or use Metabox AIO as I am showing here. You will have it when you get the Ultimate Plan or Lifetime Plan, or the Developer Bundle. Go to this menu to see all of the Metabox's extensions. Please make sure that you enabled the following extensions. First, MB Custom Post Type and Custom Taxonomies, it's a free extension of Metabox to create custom post types. MB Views helps you to create templates without touching the theme files. Next is Metabox Builder which provides a UI in the back end to create custom fields easily. Metabox Conditional Logic lets you show fields precisely as any rules you want. And, the last one is Metabox Group. This extension helps you organize custom fields into repeatable and collapsible groups. That's all. Let's create a new post type for products. Now, a new menu named Online Shops appears. It's the new post type one created. To have spaces for product information, we need custom fields. Metabox has more than 50 field types, so you can choose any type of field you want to have additional information for your products. We already have a video to talk about each type of field, so you can learn about each one in detail. As you all know, some products may not have any variation. So, we need a field to choose when it has one. Here is a switch field with on and off options and we will set this field to be a yes no question. So I change the label of the on and off options to yes and no. When it is no, means that the product has no variation and is a simple product. For a simple product, we have some basic information that we put in a group with subfields inside. Since this group of fields shows up only when the product is simple, we need to go to the advanced tab of the group to set a conditional logic rule. This is the ID of the switch field. And, set this as zero. It's the value of the no option in the switch field. This means that the group will display only when the switch field is chosen as no. If the product has any variation, we will have another group of fields for the variation's information. However, the information of variation almost is the same with a simple product, so I duplicate this group for saving time. Then change the labels and IDs of fields. In most cases, we will have more than one variation, so I set this group as clonable to have more spaces to fill in information for variations. Oh, I almost forgot an important thing that, each variation is a color of the product. So, we need a color field here. To make it easy, I set it as a select field with options as we can see here. This group will show up when the switch field is chosen as yes, so we change the value in this condition to 1. It's the value of the yes option in the switch field. We've done all the custom fields for products as well as the variation. So now, go to the settings tab and choose the location as the post type of the products that we've just created to apply the custom fields to it. Back to the post editor. You will see all of the created custom fields. This button is no in default, so if the product has no variation, don't touch it. The product is simple type now, so we cannot clone these fields. If the product has variations, slide this to yes, and, another group of fields will be shown like this. 
you can click add more to add variations. Now, enter the information into the fields. To display the product variations information on the product page, you normally have to go to the themes files to add code or use a page builder. But, you have another way with Metabox, it has the MB Views extension to create templates without touching the themes files. I'm creating a new template using it. In some other tutorials, I usually put code in the template tab. But, today, I will insert fields from this button instead of typing code. First. I'll insert this switch field to know whether the product has variations or not. I'm creating a variable to get value from that field. If the product has no variations, it means that this variable has the value as zero. Then, we will get subfields from the simple product group. I'll insert these fields one by one. I will create a slider with a large image frame above in a section for displaying image thumbnails. So, I will add the image gallery twice. The first one will be large. And, the second one will be set as thumbnails. Next, I'm inserting the product name and its description fields. They are the default fields of WordPress. There's no notice here. For the product's price, sometimes it has promotional price. I will insert both promotional price and original price. And, also set a rule. If there is no promotional price, only the value from the original price will be obtained and displayed. Otherwise, if it has any promotional price, both of these prices will be displayed. For the size field, because it is a checkbox list field, you'll have a setting here, that you can choose the output as value or label of the options. Do likewise for the status field. So, we've just inserted all the fields of a simple product. If this variable is not zero, it means that the product has variations. Then, the values of fields for variations will be displayed. We'll insert one by one the same as the simple product. But, this group is clonable. So, whenever you open the group here to find any field, it will auto-generate a loop as you can see here. Just delete these texts and insert fields inside. you can insert all the fields in the group into this loop. But, in this practice, I will create separate loops for each field, so that it will be easier to style each element later. The order and concept for fields of variations are the same as the simple product. But it has an additional field which is color. It is quite important because it defines the name of the variation. So remember to insert it. Finally, scroll down to the settings section of the view, set it as singular to apply this template to a single post page, then add a rule to apply it to the detail page of product only. Now, go to a product page, all the product information is displayed here already. It is so messy now, we'll need some JS and CSS to make it more beautiful with a better layout. Before styling, we need to edit this template a little bit more. Back to the view. Then add some div tags to divide elements into sections. Instead of typing each one, I pasted all the code here for saving time. It's available on our GitHub, so you can refer to it. In the place where I output the color of variations, I added an a tag. Also create a dynamic class. It will generate different classes for colors. Name of the class is the color name as well. You can see that in the price field, I added an attribute named data ID. For the price of each variation, this attribute will get the value of the corresponding color name. I also have this attribute for size, status, as well as image gallery. So that every element of a variation is assigned attributes which have the same value as the name of the color of the variation. It will help to know which variation is showing, and display the corresponding information for that variation. Back to the detailed product page, all the elements were just reordered. Let's move to the next step. 
As you see at the beginning of this video, the images of the product variations are in a slider, and the information of each variation displays only when you choose the matching color. To have it, I use some JS and CSS. But instead of adding them directly to the theme, I'm using my custom functionality plugin, so when I change the theme, it won't be affected. You can download this plugin from GitHub and install it on your website. And, for the JS and CSS, I use the Slick library. It's also available on GitHub. It includes several files as you can see here. But, we just need three of them. Go to the folder of the My Custom Functionality plugin, upload them into the corresponding JS and CSS folders. Next, to set a rule that stipulates for displaying the information of each variation, I'll create a custom JS file in the JS folder. In this code, I also set a slider for the image gallery. This is used to create a slider for the elements that have this class. They are product images which I set to display in the large size. And, this is to create a slider as well. The elements which have this class are product images which I set to display in the thumbnail size. We will call this slider as thumbnail slider, and the previous one for large images will be called as large slider to differentiate them easier. This code is to identify which thumbnail is in the current slide, and that thumbnail will be added a class as is active. This code is to trigger the event that someone clicks on the large image to move to the other one, then the thumbnail slider will be changed to the corresponding thumbnail. Otherwise, when someone clicks on the thumbnail slider, this code will trigger that event. Then, it also displays the corresponding large image in the large slider. Move to the next lines of code, this one will trigger when someone clicks on a product color using the A tag we added in the view, do you remember it? Then, do the following actions at once. This is to remove the active class from the unselected color and add it to the selected one. This is to remove and add the active class to all the elements that have value of the data ID attribute as the name of the color. It means that when you click on a color, all the corresponding information of that variation such as price, size, status, and image gallery will be displayed. And this is to refresh both sliders to load new images. These codes are to know which size is being chosen. That's all for the code in the custom JS file. You can refer to it on GitHub that I put the link in this video description as well as the post on our blog. Now, declare all the JS and CSS files that we have just uploaded and created. Do it by adding code to the plugin PHP file. And, inside this function. Now, the product images have already turned into a slider but we cannot see all the information of each variation in the right place. Let's go ahead to style this page. Traditionally, you have to add CSS to the customizer or the themes file. But, with MB views, you have this place instead to add CSS. There are many classes I used in this code. You can refer to this code on GitHub or in the article that I put the link in the description to look at them in detail. Now, back to the detailed product page. It turned into a new look. When you choose a color, the photo gallery will automatically change according to that color. At the same time, the sizes and prices also change correspondingly. The slider also had a beautiful look. So my JS code is already working well. That's all for the tutorial today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Bye.